Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today I have a couple of very interesting things to talk about, but I want to start it out with a video. This right here is a video of Ripple Managing Director Sandy Young. Uh, it says she feels a price question about XRP in regards to its performance as a bridge currency. Let's take a look. How important is it that XRP um, stays one of the top tokens for this to work? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, I would say we're not, you know, we so much focus on the particular sort of price of XRP or the volatility or any other coin particularly. That so doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it has a higher or lower market cap. So if we look at our, again, on the on-demand liquidity solution, RippleNet, where we are using XRP as a bridge currency, right, to move fiat, you know, around the world, right? Um, that is, you know, regardless of the price of so XRP. All that matters is how many there are. It doesn't matter what the price is. It's, it's, yeah, it's a bridge that we are using as a bridge. So um, it's not, you know, we're not here really to obviously like speculate and, and um, it's, you know, it's a means to an end, it's a means to bring that efficiency to the market. So, um, and again, I mean, when these things happen, obviously like prices drop, etc. For me, what's interesting is when I talk to one of our customers, partners and the benefits they see, right? A, you know, the customer, as you know, is a you know, great example to one of the big remittance companies in when they can enable their payments, a, I don't know, Filipino worker paying, you know, from the UK, sending money to their family to pay for food or housing or hospital, or whatever it is, and they can do that at a fraction of the cost, um, yeah. you know, at, at, that for me is, is, you know, where the big value is, um, as opposed to, you know, how much XRP is in circulation or not, and, you know, I mean. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Little side note, uh, we did a cool stream yesterday and my headset is actually literally broken. I've tried for about, I'm going to say 20 minutes to try and fix it. Impossible. So uh, no more crypto live streams ever because I break stuff apparently. What I guess I should say is if you're enjoying this video, make sure you go ahead and press that like button. And my question of today is what part of the world are you watching this video from? In the next couple of months, I'm going to visit a lot of different countries and I just like to see where y'all are watching this video from. So just put it down below. I'm, I'm going to read everything. And to quickly discuss it, the price obviously does not matter. We've had a couple of different parties like the SEC kind of kind of talk about these matters, but let's just say it like this, all right? Ripple, for Ripple, the price does not matter, even though I have it in my bookmarks, right, that a David Swartz explained at some point that a higher XRP price would help Ripple in several ways. It's 2017, and he explained these higher XRP prices and why it would only be good for Ripple, and it's quite logical. But the latter part of what she says regarding how XRP should be utilized, how it's going to be utilized... Yeah, I was like, oh, can I pause it again? Uh, that's more important to me, a lot more. Literally thinking about how, for example, if you're in the Philippines, or I guess if you're in the US, you want to send money home to your family in the Philippines, for example, that that's done in the most efficient and cheap manner. I have a lot of people that I know that send money back home to pick a country, right? Let's keep it a little bit vague in that sense. And it always is about a three to 5% fee or so. And if you're sending a hundred bucks, it's five bucks, which to you might not matter the most because you're the one sending it, you're the one with the money. It becomes different though for the receiving end because a 5% difference is a very significant amount for a receiver. For example, if you send 100 bucks and the salary is $20 a month, well, it's a whole week of working that you've just gotten uh, lost to fees, basically. So if you can minimize that, and that's the power of Ripple, that's huge. There's another fun, ah, okay, the previous thing, I guess, was not really fun. It depends on how you view it. Uh, I guess it's kind of fun to see that they're fixing that problem and doing it so well. Um, but take a look at this. So this invitation for Brad, it's to Maynet 2022, can't be spotlighted enough. Remember, these people hate Ripple. We have been uncovering their own words and putting a timeline together for over a year. The pressure is real. Who will start talking first? That's the question. So uh, a lot of these guys, they're not really too happy with Ripple, or rather, a lot of the people attending Maynet are usually not too excited about how... Um, I guess how Ripple has done their things or not really that big of a fan of their side of the lawsuit. And I usually get quite interested in thinking just how that is changing uh, to explain. Before Coinbase got into trouble, before the ex-employee got uh, arrested for the insider trading, I swear there was so much less of this support going on from these main players. A lot of them were like, uh, Ripple, you're on your own for this lawsuit. 
And all of a sudden, after that happened, they were like, oh, wait a minute, the SEC is going after crypto exchanges too. And once they're done with Ripple, they're most likely going to go for other crypto since right now they're already going for nine other crypto as well. Yeah, let's kind of protect them a little bit. And I think it's just a fun response to see how how right now a lot more people might sympathize with Brad and say, oh, how could it be? How do you feel about the lawsuit? Oh, well, well. When before it was like, huh, you dumbass, you got sued because you're running a freaking scheme. Anyway, Raul Paul says hedge funds, family offices, institutions, and retail all underweight crypto. I, I honestly don't really care about his views on the matter. He might be a uh, former Goldman Sachs executive, but he said a couple of dumb things in the past, like every person in this world that can speak, I should add. However, the message is quite clear. Underweight crypto. You know, you know how I'm interpreting this right now, and that's actually, I think, the opinion that most people are having. You might understand that a lot of hedge funds are waiting on the sidelines to enter into crypto. We, we've seen that for the last couple of years. We've also seen it with the fact that a ETF in, from Bitcoin on spot has not been approved in the US just quite yet. However, we all know they're actually willing to get in. And when those surveys went around from the big uh, fund managers, you can know, let's say about 9 out of 10 at least, want to get into this space to at least, from some perspective, diversify into it. Maybe as a hedge, it doesn't matter why. Uh, they just want to get into it. It's just confirmed already for a long time now. There's something holding them back. And we talked earlier today about a lot of the tether or, or rather a lot of the stable coins being held right now. They have those that money ready to be deployed into crypto again. There's two things which I'm thinking. One is a lot of these guys are waiting for the main approval, either from a Ripple SEC lawsuit approval, sort of where the first crypto gets properly regulated in the US or a Bitcoin spot ETF, which gets them to come on in or uh, they're waiting off for this recession to kick in to some degree with, for example, their stablecoin money. Even though this is partially about them you know, taking the step to get into crypto, I'm talking about both scenarios here. Because you got to think about it. Why would people have this stablecoin? They're bullish on crypto. Otherwise, they, they would have just taken out their stablecoin and get it to real US dollars or whatnot. Because stablecoin will not survive if crypto go completely away, so to speak, right? If crypto is useless, then stablecoins are also useless, so to speak. Um, at least the ones that are decentralized to a certain degree, right? I'm, I'm guessing like a CBDC you can consider a stable coin to some extent. Uh, that could still work out fine, I guess. <laughs> you know? But specifically, a lot of those algorithmic stable coins and whatnot, that won't survive if crypto just disappears, I guess. If you're not bullish on the tech, you won't have your money in stable coin, period. Now, that makes for an interesting discussion, though regarding what exactly they're waiting for. Like I just said, I'm honestly thinking they're waiting maybe for the recession to kick in or for Bitcoin to make this relief, um, which by the way, it just had a little pump and dump. Bitcoin earlier today went to like 24.3 thousand before then dumping a thousand bucks in like a couple minutes. Uh, a little pump and dump scheme on Bitcoin, a little fake out, which was interesting. I covered it over in my Telegram, which I recommend you guys to join. Okay, and apparently my uh, camera is stuck like this. I'm not so sure what to do. Uh, so I guess from here on forward, we'll have to go without a camera. But I wanted to say, I've actually been on a hiring spree for the last, I would say, month or so. I've also been uh, getting a lot of interviews done. And if you're looking to, I guess, work in crypto, work in blockchain, shoot me a message on maybe Instagram or so, or maybe Twitter. It doesn't matter where exactly you do it. Because I've been hiring a lot of different areas, you know? You just have to be good at something. What? I don't know. I, I guess I'm looking for anything, really. <laughs> so just let me know what you're good at or what you like to do. And, and we'll see if I can get you sorted, right? Here's, for example, one of the analysts which I'm working with right now. And you got to kind of, you know, give him a little credit for what he's pulled off here. It's looking pretty damn cool. So one of the things which he says for uh, for Bitcoin right now, wave five ending possibly end uh, of larger wave III until price hasn't reached any four hour confirmation zone. We cannot know for certain that price has ended its larger pullback and thus the ending of correction wave ABC. Right. And then we have his, I guess, potentials right here with a four hour bullish confirmation mark and a four hour bearish continuation, um, I guess, pattern or continuation, just period. Um, having said that, yeah, would you guys like to see more of him? Would you guys like to see him on the show slash channel? Should I create another sort of channel for him? Should I just give these updates out to my Patreon members or just put it in the Telegram? Let me know down below if you'd like to see more of this stuff. He has so much and he's, 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 a, he's a beast. You know, I've been following him for a good while beast let's continue on for a little bit again guys i have no camera for uh, for unfortunate reasons but it'll have to do uh there's a little bit of juicy news regarding q and t by the way going completely under the radar sia merged with nets and nexi to become europe's largest fintech organization rivaling swift okay that sounds pretty scary but what is it about well microsoft integrates oracle's oc with azure from microsoft now partnering with nexi and nexi is one of the things we remember from a little while ago how you can see here, Q&T. What, what does that mean? Let's take a look. 
First, Oracle partners with Microsoft and now Nexi is partnering with Microsoft. Cloud Solutions Azure, if you know, you know. QNT Interoperability. Scrolling down, QNT is the interoperability provider for Nexi, Europe's largest fintech. Yeah, do I even have to say anything more? Do I even have to say anything more? <laughs> Let me just say something, guys. The next couple of months are going to be extremely exciting for crypto, and I'm very glad that I'm able to share all this stuff with you. If there's any piece of news that you'd like to be shared, you know, for example, I see some stuff on Twitter that I've not covered before. I, I try to always look at what you guys send me over on Twitter or send me over on different socials. I always take a look. For example, Mason posted earlier, probably nothing regarding HBAR. It's showcasing the growth fund of the ecosystem, the amount of money they put into this fund to expand. You can see $5 billion that they've allocated for this. It's going to be huge. I mean, a lot of this crypto stuff is just expanding so massively. People are not seeing it, but it, it is. It really is. It's crazy, crazy, crazy if you start to think about it. But that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video, most likely somewhere later today.